In this Happy New Year episode, I'll ponder the different cycles that we can experience in life and, of course, horsemanship. So here we go, 176 cycles. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. Happy New Year! (laughs) Whether you are listening to this soon after it was released in the first week of January, or if you're listening to this, I don't know, (laughs) mid-June or any other time, it still applies because today is the first day of the next year's worth of time. And I don't know, I really do my best, I I, I try, uh, to think of every day as having the exact same importance as every other day. I'm not generally a big, you know, holiday (laughs) person, in many ways, you know, for that reason. But still, I appreciate the rhythms of life. And some of these markers are really helpful. So whether it's a cycle of a year or seven years or a decade, whether it's the cycle of a day into night or the seasons or the ebb and flow of tides, I can appreciate the sort of natural moments of rest and recovery that are presented. And it's kind of feels to me like life is breathing. And I think these days we humans have kind of figured out how to beat the cycles, right? The sun goes down, the lights go on. <laughs> it's winter, the ground freezes, but we can still buy apples. The days are shorter, but we can still figure out how to work just as long as we like. And so I think often our sort of natural ways of regulating can get disrupted and even confused. And in the same way, our measures of success can get sort of infected by this constant stream of too much information or more information than we need about too many people. And anytime we go into a cycle of rest, like There's somebody else out there that we can see right now doing so much more, right? So there's there's always so much to learn, so much to do, so much to be, so much to keep up with. Better stay ahead, better stay current, better stay relevant, better not rest. (laughs) And this can all have a huge effect on us. And often it's something that's sort of happening in the background all the time in the way we humans live right now. So to pause, to breathe in deeply, out fully, and then maybe out a little bit more for a little bit longer. Pause. We are breathing and in a way we are the breath. And in the inhale. It's its how we begin in the world, right? With an inhale and we accept this gift of life and we're preparing for what we know we need to do. Exhaling out. We let go. We surrender. And this, But it also could be an exhale of full commitment and a sort of release into your power as you exhale during effort. But that in and that out, there's a cycle. We're not meant to be an environment where it's just constantly, 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 constantly. But there's this other piece in the cycle of breathing. There's the little pause. The pause at the end of the exhale, before we inhale. I think humans are much better at the other one. (laughs) The inhale, hold those little moments of, of, being unsure, the little movement of moment of, I can't believe I'm going to do this, or 
you know, the hold that comes along with a little bit of a grimace and closing of your eyes. Like, oh, I'm just going to jump in. <laughs> but I'm talking about the other one, that other pause in the cycle of breathing, that moment after the exhale, before the inhale, the pause. It's not holding. It's not forcing. It's just being there. It kind of feels like stillness, but not stagnation. And I know many of you probably done breathing exercises where this is focused on. But what I'm talking about is sort of the those the times that it happens naturally. So of course I'm talking about breathing now, and in that feeling of when you're just literally inhaling and exhaling, and you notice that pause, that pause where. Like you've got enough oxygen. You're good here. You don't need to inhale. You're not stopping yourself from inhaling. You simply don't seem to need it. And part of that beauty of that moment is that it's sort of implied and trusted that, of course, the next inhalation, the next inspiration will be there. (laughs) We don't have to worry. It's not an effortful thing. It's just sort of this state during your breath where you kind of notice that you don't need to breathe in. You're good. And so if you kind of overlay a cycle of breathing over a cycle of life, right? There's the big cycles and the little cycles. So of course, I'm still breathing, we're breathing in, we're breathing out, there's a pause, we breathe in, we breathe out every few seconds. But I just feel this year, coming into this new year, there's this still point. And it's been really interesting for me because (laughs) I'm a go-getter. I'm big on relaxation, but, you know, in movement, (laughs) So I've been kind of looking at myself going, isn't this interesting? I'm feeling this still point. I'm feeling like I inhaled, I exhaled. It's all good. I have what I need. And I just would like to sit here. So there's probably a name for this moment. There's probably a meaning for this moment. There's probably a multi-step pranayama that incorporates it somehow. I could probably learn something about like the oxygen and CO2 levels and what they're actually doing in my body during this respiratory pause. And normally, I would want to know. I would be looking that stuff up. But it feels like to do that, I would actually have to come out of this moment. (laughs) I would need to take a deep breath and then dive in and get those multiple tabs open and cross-reference. And then, you know, but maybe I'll get it wrong. Like maybe I'll just get a little information and then, oh, but that's not the whole picture. I could get it wrong. (laughs) And right now, I just feel like being still and feeling and being. So, yeah. (laughs) Is this wisdom? I don't know. It's just interesting. So I was kind of marveling at myself this week. I mean, I've I've kind of felt this coming. This has been coming on gradually over this past year. Um, But I was marveling at myself this past week as I usually um, really enjoy crafting a, a holiday message and especially a New Year's message. And Usually soon after Christmas, I start thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. I'm crafting and I'm pondering it. And uh, I like to send it out uh, on New Year's Eve, you know, before the new year. And I would go across Facebook and I'd see other people's posts. And some of them were so beautifully written and so meaningful and so deep. And I'm thinking, gosh, the horse world, like my people... (laughs) You know, I feel like when I started doing these more mindful posts about horsemanship, I felt like an oddball, like nobody nobody I knew talked like that as a professional horse person. So I'm so 
heartened by what I'm seeing out there now or what Facebook is showing me on my algorithm, but they got it right, my people. (laughs) And it just warms my heart. And often there's just enough um, competitiveness in me that I'm like, oh, yes, I have those deep feelings too. (laughs) I'm the queen of the deep feelings. Look at my post. Look what I'm going to come out with. (laughs) So, So I was just noticing myself and thinking, isn't that interesting? I'm just don't feel like doing it. I just don't feel like doing it, but it felt, it did not feel like procrastination. It didn't feel like, oh, somebody else wrote a better one. I can't write one as good. It did not feel like anything like that. It just felt like a pause. Inhale, exhale, stillness. I have all the oxygen I need. I'm good. And I trust that there will be another inspiration on its way. So I decided instead of thinking about what brilliant, heartfelt, insightful thing that I was going to post on Facebook, (laughs) I thought, well, why don't I just think about myself? (laughs) Why don't I just do my usual thing that I do every year, which is ponder the year past and ponder the new year? and what I really wanted to do for me. And I I found myself, when I was having these little realizations, I was finding myself already crafting how I was going to describe this to you guys, to whoever happens to be looking at reading or listening to my post or podcast or something like that. And I'm thinking, wait, I'm trying to set up things for the new year. And I'm thinking, ooh, ooh, this would make a great post. This may, you know, this, I'll write it this insightful way. And I realized how much I was crafting my experience as a post for somebody else to read or as a whatever, as something for somebody else to read. And I was doing it a little too quickly. So there's a difference, I think, between having an experience, having an insight, having a thought for oneself, and then later telling the story about it. But that's not what I was doing. It's like I was having the insight and right in that moment thinking about how I was going to describe it to somebody else before I was actually even fully having it myself. Now, I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I love to be here. But I was like, whoa, Karen. <laughs> like, I think I need to really just think about this for a minute because I'm not then having my experiences. I'm just, you know, I'm telling about the experiences that I could be having if I really dropped into myself. Breathe in, breathe out pause. Now, I do realize the irony in telling you about this, because here I am telling you about it. But like I said, there's a difference. (laughs) I've had this experience. I did have my meditation on the new year, and that's my secret. I'll keep that to myself. Because in the stillness is all the information I need. It's in that stillness, the more I embrace it without making it try to be anything else. It's where I felt and feel the most connection with myself right now. It's not in the doing, it's not in the striving, it's not in the stories, it's not what other people think about me. It's just in that stillness where everything is beautiful and everything is enough. And I trust the next inhale will come. When I think about, you know, layering this breathing over periods of time in my life, like the last decade or two has been a huge inhale. It's been a huge powering up, receiving the gift of creation. (laughs) I entered a whole new world and it was a lot like a birth. (laughs) And there was a bit of breath holding. There's a little bit of control. And then 
and exhale. Letting go for sure, but with real power. And repeat. (laughs) So again, the last two decades, I've changed a lot. Took a big deep breath in, closed my eyes, squinched a little bit, and powered through. And it's been awesome. And there has been exhale. There has been a letting go, not just with power, but with relaxation, with release, with surrender. But I've been repeating that without much pause. And now I'm really, really feeling the need for the pause. And it's so easy to look around and want to gulp for air, to feel the need to do more, to power up. There's so much more to do, to learn, to improve, to share, to achieve. But the more I let go, and the more I'm playing with this, in this noticing of how much I really want to do and do and do and do and see what everybody else is doing and do some more of that, and share and share and share, the the more I notice that and play with the stillness, the actually more expansive it feels. And so it feels amazing. You know that feeling when you can't catch your breath? You just can't catch it. And now, as I give myself the time to just breathe and pause, it doesn't feel like doing less. So I know some of you, hopefully, you know, Hopefully you're listening to this and you're not thinking, oh my God, she's talking about pausing. Is she going to stop everything? Am I stopping my courses? Am I stopping teaching? Am I stopping? No, I'm not. It's more of, it's more of a internal thing. It's more about the come from. And the more I play with allowing myself the stillness, cue the gasp, yes, allow the stillness, the more expansive everything feels. It feels less like missing something and it feels more in connection with possibility, which feels huge. So I do love a good paradox. (laughs) The more still I feel, the more possibility there is. And in that, in that feeling of that stillness, that feeling of I have oxygenated, I have relaxed, I have released, now just be. It's a, it's a place where I feel like only I get to measure my success. Only I get to decide what's the thing I do now and the thing I do next. Only I get to decide the shape of all my relationships with humans, with animals, with everything. And so when I sat down to write my vision for the new year, as I usually do, I've done this for years, I found myself just staring at the page. Who am I to say what I want to have happen or how I want things to show up? So I decided to just write down what I knew was true and how I want, how I want to feel. And the rest is free to occur. <laughs> and I promised myself to be present enough to see it and surrender to it. So I'm wondering, you know, can I play with this for this moment? It's easy on New Year's Day. (laughs) But I wonder how long the pause will be. Will it be a month? Will it be the next 10 years? Is it just the new state to be in? A new state to come from and breathe (laughs) from here? You know, to let this next phase of my life sit in the trust of the oxygen that's already inside me and the trust that what I need is always one breath, one inspiration away. Is this a new normal or is this just a phase? Do I even need to know? (laughs) Breathe in, breathe out, pause. We breathe in exactly what we need, when we need it, automatically if we let it. I mean, how freaking cool is that? And consciously, if we want to, how freaking cool is that? All right. So horsemanship, what does this all have to do with horsemanship? Well, I'm, I'm sure that you're already 
connecting the dots. There are cycles in our horsemanship too. When we're inhaling, ready to say yes, to take action, filling and fueling yourself with education, inspiration, bigger goals. And there are moments when you want to add power to what you're doing, to push yourself to do more heavy lifting. Or when you just want to surrender and stop. Stop trying so hard. And instead, just allow and find the relaxation inside your movement. And there's times of stillness and trust where everything is beautiful and everything is enough. And you just await the next inspiration. It's all okay. Just be careful not to measure yourself compared to someone else who's in a different cycle or phase. Just notice and align your feelings, thoughts, words, and actions so you can be in harmony instead of fighting yourself. Okay. So I actually recorded this last part before New Year's Eve. And then somewhere between New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I had a dream. I shared it on Facebook and I thought I'd share what I wrote here also. So here it goes. Last night, I had a dream that I could levitate. It started with a feeling of just being a little bit lighter. Then lighter and lighter. And I could feel a slight right and left slipping of my feet across the floor as they started to leave the ground. I came back down in a cocktail of disbelief and giddy excitement. And of course I had to try it again. Up I went, floating a millimeter an inch, a foot. I was weightless. I came back down feeling pretty special. I turned to another person in the room and I said, hey, check this out. I can levitate. And I levitated again. And then I looked over and I noticed that they were actually on their phone and they weren't really watching me. So I came back down and I said, hey, I can really levitate. Like, watch me. And so they put down their phone and they watched. Nothing. I kind of stood there. I was like lifting up my spine inside my skin, but I didn't go anywhere. It was just me standing there. And the person looked up at me through their brow and with a little tilt of their head that said, "Uh, that it? You done? And when I woke up from that dream, I was thinking about it. And in general, I don't really think that anything means anything except for the meaning that we decide to give something. However, I was sure there was something that could be learned from uh, my subconscious movie selection that night. It was something about not needing approval from others. It was something about just enjoying the magic when it happens. It was something about it not mattering what anyone else thinks, or even if they see it. So the lesson was not that I wasn't actually levitating. I mean, the lesson was that I was. I mean, I could feel it. I was lightness. And I was special, not because I could levitate, but because everyone is special all the time. And in this time of social media, and especially for myself as a person in the, you know, horse public eye, I find that so much of my life is experienced in the context of how am I going to show this or explain it to someone? What should I show or say or write to remind people of just how special I am. Now, I had been kicking myself a bit, as I explained earlier, for not creating a deep, insightful New Year's post. And I had wondered why, because I usually do want to share so much, and I do love to explain stuff and share insights. And also, I love to do it because I'm so, so grateful for anyone who listens or reads or watches anything that I 
put out there. But I've been swimming in this place of stillness lately and it's been feeling pretty good. So I decided, as my wonderful partner Dana always tells me in such times, (laughs) to go with it. And again, I realize the irony of sharing this story to tell you that I'm feeling like not sharing stuff. (laughs) Baby steps. I guess the difference is I'm okay if nobody really listens. Hey, that's pretty Buddhist right there, right? To be that detached from the outcome, to love to share, but not need anything back from the sharing. And it's amazing how a little shift inside the mind can change so much. So here is me wishing all of you the happiest of new years and new days and new moments. You are all special all the time. Everything is beautiful and everything is enough. And I'm going to stop here because I'm starting to levitate again. And very soon I'll be too far away from the microphone for you to hear me.